Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, The Tech Coders, and today we are going to solve question number one eight seven seven C of Code Forces, that is Joy Board, and which was the part of Code Forces around nine zero two division two. Okay, so let's understand what exactly question is saying to us. The question is states that Chaneka is a gamer kid who has invented a new gaming controller termed as Joy Board. Okay, and in that Joy Board there are going to be n plus one slots, and the n plus one slots are going to be filled with an array of non-negative integers that is from a one, a two, a three up to a n plus one. Okay. Chaneka as the player must assign a n plus one with an integer between zero and a inclusively. Okay, this means that the Chaneka is going to assign a value to a n plus one, which is going to lie between zero and one, or either zero or m. Okay, as it is given inclusive over here, and for each a i, the value is going to be equal to a i plus one mod i. Simple. Okay. So Chenica wants it says that after every slot is assigned with an integer, there are exactly k distinct values in the entire string. So how many valid ways are there for assigning a non-negative integer into slot n plus one? Okay. So now let's try to get this with the help of an example. Okay. So let us suppose that we are having five values with us. Okay. Four, five, and this is n plus one, and this is n plus one. That is five plus one. So it's obvious that it is gonna be an n. Okay, it is gonna be n minus one, and from here it is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so it is given in the question that after performing all the operations, I should be having k distinct values in the integer. So let's just forget about that thing. I'm just saying a very simple thing. Okay, that is when I will have only one distinct value in my array. Only one distinct value in my array. It's obvious that when I'll put zero over here, when I will put zero over here, then only I can have zero in my entire array. Why? Let's see. Because it is given in the question that a of i is equals to a of i plus one mod i. Okay. So what will the value of this index? That is as zero is at a of i plus one mod five. It is going to be zero. So zero will come over here again. Zero mod four is zero, 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 zero. Okay, so now I can say that yeah, if I'll put zero at the a n plus one at that time, I'll be having only one distinct. Okay, now let me erase this, and after that we'll check for a is equals to two. Okay, after analyzing this, we will realize that we cannot be able to have a value more than k is equals to. Now I'm saying that what would be the possible way of putting values over here so that I can have two distinct values in my resultant array? Okay, so see what I said initially, n is equals to five, n is five, and n plus one is equals to six. So can I say a very simple thing that is, if I'll put two into n over here, two into n over here, then I will have zero over here, and once I'm having zero. Then it's obvious that I'll be having zero for each of these cases, each of these indexes. Why? Let's see. What I did? I did that. I put two n in a n plus one. Okay. So after that, what should be my value of a n? That is a n plus one mod n. Okay. What it is? Two n mod n. Simple. So the remainder is going to be zero. So the remainder is going to be zero, and once I'm having zero over here, it's obvious that I'll be having zero in each of these places. Okay, so here I made one observation. Here I made one observation, and I'm also having another observation. That is, let me erase it first. Okay, now try to get my point. What I said that the value of n is equals to five. What if I'll put a value lesser than five over here? What if I'll put a value lesser than five over here? Let's try to see that. Let's suppose that I'm putting three over here. I'm putting three over here. What will the value over here? That is three mod five. It's obvious it is going to be three. Three mod four, as it is three mod four, it is going to be three. But when I'll come over here, over here I'll be doing three mod three. It is going to be zero. And once I'm having zero, I'll be having zero for each of these values. Once I'm having zero, I'll be having zeros for each of these values. Simple. Now I can conclude that if I take Now I can conclude that if I take a value less than n at n plus one index at that time, I'll be having two distinct values. Okay. So now let's check for k is equals to three. Now let's check for k is equals to three. Now see, 
what all things we have considered that is if i am putting 0 then it is going to be 1 if i am putting a value lesser than n at that time um, i'll be having two distinct values if i am putting a value 2n that time i'll be having two distinct values what i'm left with i'm left with a value greater than n and it should not be a multiple of n and it should not be a multiple of n that is a of n mod a of n plus 1 should not be equal to 0 should not be equal to 0 so let's check with some values over here okay let us suppose that i am putting 7 over here okay so what will the value for this case that is for n is equals to 5 5 mod 7 it is going to be 2 then again 4 mod 2 it is going to be 2 again 3 mod 2 it is going to be 2 then it is 2 mod 2 it is going to be 0 and once i'm having 0 i'll be having zeros for all the values for the left side because 1 mod 0 anything mod 0 is going to be 0 now i can see that i got three distinct values i got three distinct distinct values now let's check for 8 okay 5 mod 8 it is, is gonna be 3 4 mod 3 is gonna be 3 again 3 mod 3 is going to be 0 and once i'm having 0 i'll be having 0 for all the cases that is 2 mod 0 is 0 1 mod 0 is 0 so now what can I conclude? I can conclude that if I'm taking a value greater than n and if that value is not a multiple of n, if that value is not a multiple of n, at that time I can have three distinct values. I can have three distinct values. So I again made two observations over here. Again I made two observations over here. Now you can see that I have considered each value of each possible values of n. Okay, let it be 0, let it be greater than n, let it be lesser than n let it be multiple of n or if it is not a multiple of n you cannot have any other sort of values so i can say that yes i can only have three distinct values in my resultant answer okay it is not possible to have a value greater than three it is not possible to have a value greater than three so what will be my first case my first case is gonna be very simple that is if k is equal is greater than three at that time i will simply put zero in my answer okay now let's just repeat what i said that for k is equals to three I should be having a values greater than n values greater than n and, and it should not be a multiple of n should not a, not be a multiple of n okay for k is equals to 2 I, I should be choose a value multiple of n okay and lesser than n for k is equals to 1 simply I should choose 0 simply I should choose 0 but now see what if the value of m is less than n what if the value of m is less than n because at this point that is at a n plus 1 I am supposed to choose a value between 0 and m that to inclusive okay so at that time for k is equals to 3 I am very sure that my answer is going to be 0 because what I am doing at that time I am taking a value that is greater than n and not a multiple of n and since the m is lesser than n my answer is going to be 0 okay for k is equals to 1 it is but obvious that my answer should be 1 that is I am going to take only 0 I am going to take only 0 at a n plus 1 then only it is possible to get 1 distinct values or else I will be having 2 or 3 ok now I am left with k is equals to 2 part ok at that time I will simply exclude this that is I can't be able to have a value that is a multiple of n ok because the value of multiple n should be greater than n ok and, I, and since m is less than n I can't have that value ok so these are my observations and just replicate this observation directly into code and we'll be having our answer okay we are not supposed to intrude any other logic or the intuitions over there simple now see this is our code we are having three variables n m and k we are taking its input okay what i said at the first place that is if k is greater than three at that time i'll simply put zero in my answer because it is not possible to get more than three distinct values in my resultant answer okay i'll say if k is equals to three try to get this thing that is what I said at that time that is I should be having a value greater than n this is what I am doing over here m minus n plus 1 and it should not be a multiple of n it should not be a multiple of m now for k is equals to 1 it is very obvious that when I will take 0 in my a n plus 1 index then only it is possible to get one distinct values or else I will be having either 3 or either 2 ok so this is what our explanation was ok you can see that we just replicated our observation in this code nothing much ok so yeah guys this was the solution i hope you understood all the logic and the concepts over here and if you are having any query then just feel free to ask that in the comment box we will definitely help you to come out of it okay